gaining some ground, making a sound. How you like that? Welcome everybody to another episode of On Point. My name is Adi Magdoom. I'm your host. And today we have a very special guest, uh, a guest of honor, because in this day and age where work-life balance, working from home has become such a big struggle, this uh, one person has been an inspiration and he has been my guru. Uh, he doesn't know that yet, but I have uh, you know, learned so many things over the last few months, uh, getting associated, learning from his content and also guiding myself towards what kind of inspirations I can take from him. Uh, he is none other than the inspired analyst. I also want to, uh, you know, bring up to speed with a couple of points. He is somebody that is uh, uh, having more than a million of uh, plus followers across different digital media, uh, uh, you know, channels across TikTok, across uh, LinkedIn, across uh, Instagram, you can follow him on the you know username that I've also put in on the reel below. So you know you can stay connected. And I also want to tell you that he is somebody that has more than two thousand uh, you know students on Udemy with his basic uh, you know introduction to cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology. He's somebody I actually am uh, always taking a high regard on when it comes to you know understanding what this technology is. And he's doing so many different things that I wanted to have this discussion. He has been kind enough to give us this time and has given me uh, time to bring this insightful discussion to you. So without further ado, I'm going to invite Adnan Hashmi, also known as the Inspired Analyst. Thank you so much, Sadi Bhai, for a warm welcome. I, I believe this is the first time somebody has gone into so much details to see all my social media platforms and given me an introduction that I don't think so that I deserve at the moment. But thank you so much for, you know, inviting me to your live. And I'm here to learn. And you are an inspiration yourself. I have done a little bit of research on you as well. And with my limited research, I've also found out that you share the same story as of me, you know, working nine to five with multiple side hustles and also learning about, you know, stock investment and crypto investment. So I think it makes a good blend of, same uh, experience that we can share on this live. Amazing, amazing. And uh, thanks for that. Look, uh, I, I, I've learned one thing from the people that I have learned the maximum from. And this, I think, just from your uh, remark and also, you know, uh, I, I see the level of humility that you have here uh, is that a lot of people don't know how much they don't know. And I think that is where uh, we have the same, uh, you know, line drawn for both of us. There's a lot to learn. Uh, I think the last year and a half uh, during COVID has been the biggest learning curve for not just us as uh, you know people in the market, but also companies. Uh, companies have now learned that if they don't change, they will be changed. Companies yeah. like Skype who thought that if a day like this comes, we are going to be the king. Uh, we've seen like Zoom come in and completely overtake that uh, you know opportunity for them. So uh, you know, without further ado. Uh, First, tell us, how are you doing? And guys, look, uh, I want one thing to be an observation and an inspiration for all of you. We're talking about, uh, you know, um, um, Adnan Bhai, who has given us time during a Sunday when he is now just starting off his weekend. And he has, I can, I can tell you uh, with his, uh, you know, other stories that I've seen, he has back to back another live stream and a couple of other meetings lined up. So he is busy. He's killing it. Yeah. You know, not just during this entire thing. My biggest question for you has been, I, I've seen that, you know, there are people that are doing really good in their business life. And there are people that are really doing it and killing it in their, you know, uh, I would say, you know, work life. How do you keep the balance between us? Because I, I've seen you play with your kids. I've seen you do your home chores and you always have time to market those parts as well because you're, you're always giving your authentic self. You don't try and claim it like, look, guys, I'm just living the life or, you know, something like that. Because I, I think this is something that hit me hard a couple of years back when I uh, I got struck. Um, I, I had a very dark period where I was surrounded by depression. I had to overcome that, took, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, proper classes and, uh, you know, uh, coaching and consultancy to come out of it. How do you keep that balance and, uh, you know, how do you keep yourself away from a burnout? 
Um, that's a very good question, Zadi Bhai. Thank you so much for, you know, uh, once again, inviting me here. So let me just tell you one thing. Um, I am somebody who always try to, you know, compete with my own self. Uh, because back in my childhood, I read one simple story, which was, you know, if you really want to uh, go to the next level in your life, draw two lines. One is the line that people are consider them as people, you know, with one line. This is their life. Now, don't compare your life with them. If you want to go to the next level, make sure you draw your line bigger than them. So that means you can go to the next level yourself. So this is the motivation, you know, that I have every day. You know, I try to find out, you know, how productive my day was. So I have a normal routine that everybody has, which is, you know, nine to five. So my audience can connect with me. Anybody who is a full time uh, job person who is nine to five, he can connect with me right there. Now, something extra that I do, I believe that nine to five is what runs your kitchen, you know, what runs your household with all the bills. After five o'clock, what exactly are you doing that is making you go to the next level? That is where you have to build your empire. That is where, you know, that's the most important part from five o'clock until 12 o'clock at night, because at 12 o'clock I go to sleep. So I have another seven hours to make my empire. And in that seven hours, I have to spend time with my family. I have the time with learning. I have the time to create content. So everything, all the, uh, you know, masala and all that thing happens during that time period. So I have uh -huh. a good routine. You know, I have trained myself. And this is what is being, you know, shown to the world as well. Yeah. Nothing is there that is as a flex. It's all reality. And everybody who is real out there can connect with me. That is so good. That is so good. There's so much to take in that, uh, you know, uh, in that entire, um, I would say, uh, a segment that you've shared with us. If I take, uh, you know, just one example of, you know, finding the balance and finding and managing your work between your nine to five, because I know a lot of people that will, uh, you know, stay late at work. They don't even realize when to turn that laptop yeah. lap off and just signing out on the right time. They, they are not um, taking their time management, uh, you know, I would say, I, they're not excelling at their time management capacities. And what do you do to make sure that you're hitting those targets? Because I'm very old school. I'm still keeping an old leather diary every year, 2021, 2022, page by page, first making a to-do list and then knocking them off one by one. How do you make sure that you're making the most out of your day? So I have a calendar that I've set up that I follow wholeheartedly. So let me start with the weekend, not the Monday. On the weekend mm -hmm. itself, which is Saturday and Sunday, I make sure that I create content for the whole week, which is for my TikTok that I can repurpose on my Instagram as well as, as well as YouTube Reels. So my whole week is covered. I don't have to worry about my content creation for the whole week because I've already given at least three to four hours on a Saturday or Sunday. That is my routine for the weekend. Yeah. Now, this part is done. Now, second thing that I'm doing is you know, doing all my research on Patreon where I'm sharing all my crypto picks. That information is done during the week itself because crypto market is hot during the week. It's not very hot during the weekend. So okay. that is another thing that I do throughout the week. So mostly my, uh, you know, uh, crypto of the week is done either on Tuesday or Wednesday. So that's one of the timetable that I've set. Now my nine to five job, which is Monday to Friday, I make sure that, you know, I kill it there. I do not want to take my job for granted. It's not that, you know, my side hustle is making me more money so that I will not take my job, uh, you know, a as if it's something important. I take it as an important factor in my life because my job makes me learn the new skills that you cannot learn anywhere else. Like if you are a full-time content creator, you are just creating content. You're not learning anything, you know, but when you're at your job, you are getting all those complexities, the business problems, and you're finding the solutions by looking out there in the market, learning about the new tools every day. So let me just give you one example. I'm a data science person, okay? So every day there's some new tool coming up. Now there's another tool coming up that is going to automate all your processes, which is all tricks. Now in all tricks, you can get the data from SQL, you can manipulate the data, you can in integrate Excel component into in it. You can also visualize the data. So all that thing that you're doing it manually, now it can be done in all tricks. So this is the main reason for me to do the job because my hustling for learning never stops there. Uh, and after five o'clock, I make sure to spend at least two hours with my family, you know, with my kid, he's six years old, he's growing. So I make awesome. sure to spend some time with him, spend time with the family as well, go to the gym, 
And when I come back, I make sure I'm doing my side hustle. Amazing, amazing. Uh, Anami, this is, this is so powerful because a lot of youngsters that actually ask me these questions, uh, I think they're also giving you these questions as well. And I want this to be like, uh, you know, uh, answer to all those questions. Because I, I've seen that over the last one decade, there have been a massive, I wouldn't say a push from normal beings, like movies, uh, news, uh, articles, influencers, everybody has been telling them, nine to five is garbage, nine to five is, there's nothing in nine to five, be your own boss, become an entrepreneur, which for me has, uh, has been completely insane. Not everybody can become an entrepreneur. It's literally just saying everybody can become a scientist. Simple as that. Not exactly. everyone can do everything. Everybody has their own capacity. What would your answer be to people that are thinking that are fresh out of college and they're like, I want to start a business um, instead of, uh, you know, um, looking into getting some experience with some companies? What would your advice be to all those? So I think uh, most of these influencers, I would not like to name them, but everybody who is, you know, going against nine to five, they have an agenda. Either they're selling their own online courses or they're making you feel bad about your situation so that they can show you and they can impress you to be like them. Yeah. And if they were millionaires, they would not be on social media flexing their wealth. The mm -hmm. thing is, they are not millionaires, but there's a saying that, you know, um, make it look as if it's the truth and then let everybody follow it. So that's what everybody's doing. You know, they're flexing their fake wealth and letting you and making you feel bad about your nine to five um, so that you can, you know, be like them by signing up for their course or you can buy their own digital product. So this is, I'm totally against people, you know, who are going against nine to five because nine to five teaches you the experiences as Sadibhai, you are mashallah also doing nine to five. You know it better than me as well, that the kind of experiences nine to five job teaches you, you cannot learn it anywhere else. Why not start nine to five, learn from it and then start your business. You know, nobody's stopping you. Like after five o'clock, Everything has become so global. Everything is on the internet. Why don't you start building your, your hustle, a side hustle after five o'clock? That way you are playing it safe. You know, you are keeping a good equilibrium of, you know, a safe earning, which is nine to five. That, that earning should not be considered a job. That should be one of your main hustle. And then you can add many side hustles into it. That's yeah. my strategy. That, that, that's a good point. And I, I completely agree with you. I, I've over the last one decade, I think I have, seen an evolution of me responding to this question as well. And my question has been, I've not learned from things that I loved doing at my job. I've learned things from things that I hated doing in my job because it has taught me how to empathize with people. Exactly. It has, uh, you know, taught me how to manage a team. It has taught me how not to quit. You know, it has also taught me when to quit when I see that these are my best friends, but yeah. they have a complete different goal. They don't want to make something out of life. They want to live a very life full of entertainment and that is completely okay. But I've had to let go of a lot of my best friends because their destination was completely different than my destination. And then last thing where it boils down is like, don't skip your responsibilities to become an entrepreneur. Skip your parties for your uh, nine to five, uh, you know, after that, uh, your entrepreneurship dream, if you want to build a business, skip your, uh, you know, social life for becoming a boss of your own life. Skip your wastage of time. Don't watch this, uh, you know, new uh, series that came out. I'm not saying don't watch. I'm a, I'm a massive movie uh, buff myself. But if the movie comes out today and you have something to start with yeah. your own business, you will prioritize your dream prioritize, over yeah. that movie and you'll watch it later. It doesn't exactly. matter. If people it's not going money. anywhere. It's not yeah, going anywhere. It, exactly. Exactly. And this is, this is where I, I completely agree with you. And I, I personally also think that, look, a lot of people like to pick that one article that is flowing across the entire, uh, you know, uh, web space saying that companies like Google and Microsoft are not hiring with degrees. I can tell you all the big social media platforms, I am working with them or I have worked with them. And I can tell you one thing, only a few software engineers, data scientists, and a few jobs don't require degrees. Everything else if you want to, step, yeah. to go work with these companies to come out of Asia and explore your opportunities abroad, the first thing they'll ask you is what's the your degree. qualification yeah. to get that point. And I, I also like, I'm very straightforward. Take that degree as a passport. That will be your pathway to go to the places that you want to be. 
And then don't under underestimate. I I've seen that there are students that think education is bad because they couldn't understand a topic. No, like we have so many different, uh, you know, opportunities, podcast. Uh, this yeah, I will, I will add to your point, you know, where you're talking about take that education as a passport. So yeah. my advice to everybody listening is, you know, get your education done, get that degree, you know, that is your safe heaven. So in case you want to start your business and you fail in your business, so what other options you have to fall back on? Your degree. Your degree is going to get you the job. It can make all your expenses run, you know. But if you do not have a job to fall back on and you fail in your business, what are your options? Yeah. And um, always explore more and more options. Because look, this COVID has taught a lot of people this. A lot of people that kept saying that, hey, now nah, we don't have to change. We don't have to learn on work from home. We don't have to understand how virtual meetings work. They did not have a choice. And I have seen this firsthand where, you know, if people did not even know how to work in a virtual environment, it doesn't matter how good you are with people. If you couldn't work with technology, you lost your job. Simple exactly. as that. And that is something we all need to understand that we need to future proof ourselves. Uh, yeah. I had another guest, Abid Siddiqui, a very good mentor of mine as well. He told me about people need to understand how to gain and what skill set to gain. And mostly the skill set you want to gain in the next year are the skill sets that are transferable. You yeah. lose your job, you lose your business, whatever you know, you take that entire skill set and a bag of skill and move to another job, another area of life. And this is how you need to always be on your toe. Uh, Adnan Bhai, uh, anything that you want to add there? Yeah. Uh, uh, also, you know, if you have the right job set, uh, job skills, and you have the degree, right? This is the right time to get into any job. Like, you don't even have to go to the office. You just sit at home, apply for the jobs, work from home, go to LinkedIn, apply the filter, work from home job, go to indeed.com, apply the filter, work from home job. There are numerous jobs that you can, you know, find. And if there's any skill set that you don't have, just mm -hmm. go to udemy.com, go to YouTube and start learning about it. Nothing is stopping you. I would say only the lazy people that don't want to put their entire effort, they are the ones who will always complain about things, you know. But if somebody knows how to put in their time and effort, he can always find options, you know. Like, look at myself. I am a normal person from Pakistan who studied in a government school until I got a chance to move to, you know, Sri Lanka where I did my O-levels. That was the first time I was exposed to English language. So I learned the language. And today I'm 36 years of age. And still, I won't stop learning. Every time I'm learning something. These days, I'm learning about Looker. Looker is a Google's platform where you are going to visualize the data on top of your SQL funnel. So this way, you know, your learning never stops. The only thing that is going to make you competitive for the future job, as you were talking about, you know, future proof yourself, is keep on learning. Don't make any of your learning approach stop. Because if you do not have your LinkedIn profile optimized with all the necessary skill set, you will be left in the middle of nowhere. Let's say you join a company and that company fires you when you are 45 years of age. Where are you going to go if you do not have the skill set? You will be, you know, not demanded. And it's all about survival of the fittest. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people don't understand this. And I always keep saying this as well. Uh, in this current day and age, you don't get what you deserve. You get what you actually own and you get what you actually negotiate negotiate your way into and one thing that i wanted to repeat that ananba you mentioned was the hungry and the needy don't sleep hungry the lazy sleep hungry okay exactly. this is what will entail all the discussion that we've done so far and i want to now move on a bit uh, to something which i have been most curious about and that is something that i wanted to explore adnan pai what is the story behind the inspired analyst <laughs> that that's uh you know uh, there, there's so many thoughts that jump into my head all of a sudden and i don't know how to take those thoughts out one by one but i'll try to make it as simplified as possible <laughs> uh, nice. back in 2020 when you know this uh, pandemic hit everybody mm -hmm. i got the chance to work from home and mm -hmm. while i was working from home i could have utilized my time in two ways the extra time while working you know uh, in your nine to five job when you work from home you always have extra time i mm -hmm. i would be you know not honest to tell everybody that uh, in that eight to nine hours, you will at least squeeze two to three hours. That is extra time that you can utilize. I could have watched a Netflix, a series and enjoy myself, you know, while working on my one laptop and second screen, I'm watching Netflix. Or 
I could have used that time period to grow my online presence. So that is where Inspired Analyst came into being. My first video that I created for my TikTok, it was, I, I had to remove that video because it was so stupid, I would say. Uh, I In that video, I talked about, you know, how many hours a day Bill Gates used to work? If you guys want to know the answer, follow me and I'll let you know tomorrow. That is the video that I created. <laughs> And that video blew up. I got like 4,000 views within just 24 hours. And I'm like, wow, this is something so stupid that I wanted to share. And people actually want to know. Mm -hmm. So that was my first flight. That was my turning point for me to be uh, an influencer. And from that day onwards, I never looked back. I started creating content in Excel, stocks, crypto, data science, and all the content that I created, I was connecting with more and more people all over the world. And that is where, you know, my existence as a social media influencer came into being. And I started exploring options from TikTok, then went on to Instagram, then created my YouTube, then created my Twitter, then Patreon, and everything just started falling into place. And this is, I'm talking about 20, uh, March 2020, and mm -hmm. today is 22, uh, 2022. So we are talking about one and a half year now. So Within one and a half year, I was able to grow my audience to about a million followers. Amazing. Which is not this, this, and this is this is only possible in today's day and age. Exactly. You know, uh, what K Gary Vee keeps on saying, if in today's day and time, if you're complaining, you're definitely doing nothing right. Because look, we're, we're talking about so many different platforms. This is this in a normal day would not be possible. I would exactly. have to get 50,000 sponsors, five different uh, you know brands approving this and equipment like this. Uh, almost just a decade ago, just this camera, this mic, and this setup would cost me over a hundred thousand dollars, guys. I'm not exactly. kidding. This is exactly. what we're talking about. totally agree. And now what we're looking at is I have a handy capture card that fits with my Sony camera. There's a twenty dollar you know slingshot arm that I got for a uh, you know ninety dollar mark and two hundred dollars. And I'm super set to start exploring the best mentors and connect with them. And this is also happening. The best part about social media um, and I, i'm glad that you talked about gary v so there's one video that i watched before i created my first video mm -hmm. uh, i was you know browsing through my tiktok stream and mm -hmm. there was one video of the guy he came uh he, he was walking in the new york streets mm -hmm. and he's like i'm just creating this video because gary v said you need to create content <laughs> that was the whole video and yeah. that video had two million likes on it yeah yeah, so yeah. i'm like okay yeah, yeah that is like there are some videos that are so basic, but they they arise that kind of, you know, mentality in you that you need to be there. You need to yeah. start creating, you know, that is Allah's way of telling you, you know, you need to just start jumping in. Yeah. So this is and my look, story. But but I, before I finish my story, I would like to ask about your story as well. Uh, Sadi Bhai, tell us, you know, how did you get into social media? OK, um, I, I'll tell you one thing. Like I... My story of, uh, you know, starting content on social media came from two things. I was a public speaker before I left Pakistan. So I was doing a lot of public speaking, uh, you know, uh, with the youth, with the corporate structure, soft skills, training, presentation skills, managing a team or all those different things. Um, you know, soon, uh, around 2013, I actually took a break and left for Australia for my master's. And over there, I actually started exploring the same thing that you mentioned that on a nine to five job and on a job with a great company, you learn so many things that that one year, 2014 to 2015, I realized I don't know nothing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I wanted to actually start providing real value, I would spend the next five years, uh, you know, just learning. And the last six years, uh, the last one decade has been literally like, I don't want to become a public speaker, go back into training unless I'm satisfied that I can provide real life value. value. And okay. I was learning and learning and learning. And they came one day where I was like, look, I really love interacting with people. And I really put my, uh, you know, uh, phone in front of me. <laughs> I was sitting on my kitchen, uh, you know, counter. There's also fruit on that counter. And I just made a video and that video was not even about learning. I, I still remember that video because I thought about removing that a couple of times, but I never <laughs> did it. That was about, uh, you know, sports match that was happening. And uh, there was, a, you know, a, 
a very controversial uh, personality that came out and said, if Shahid Afridi, uh, you know, uh, hits a couple of sixes, I'm going to do something, something. <laughs> and now I really started making videos to encourage other influencers, the good ones, the teachers, the and mentors. And what was the social media that you use for that video? Facebook. And, oh, okay, uh, you know, okay. Facebook. And uh, I really just put out that video saying, guys, I really think that we as the right people, the teachers, the mentors, the coaches, the real people, if we don't start guiding our youth, the wrong people will. Oh, and yeah. we're giving exactly. away this platform. I love that. I love that. And that was the day I started. And then it has never been like, I know that a lot of, uh, you know, video comments I used to get and still till date were like, if you guys can make your videos interesting, you'll gain more followers. I'm like, look, something I uh, learned last week and something that has stuck by me because I, I've, from a very early age, believed in the concept of having a coach. It doesn't matter if you're a millionaire and you need a coach. No. If you're a student, you need a coach. You need a coach. If you're a child, you need a coach. If you're someone who has a billion dollar business, you need a coach. And at that time, it uh, a guy told me that, look, it's better to have that one person who changes their life with your speech and discussion rather than an auditorium full of standing ovations. <laughs> that was the first Love point. That. And last week, there's a lady called Shanae Murray, and she actually said that when you're online and you're creating content, you're not looking for everyone. You're not looking at mm. pleasing everyone. You're looking mm. for people that are looking for you. Exactly. That hit me That's hard. So I was like, wow. It's like, I'm going to continue, restart creating content. Doesn't matter about the quality of the video. It matters about the quality of the message exactly. that I want across. That's it. Based on this point, I would like to tell everybody who's watching it, you know, don't worry about your content being a bad quality or not. As long as you're providing value to the audience, your audience is going to find you no matter wherever they are. Just start creating content. If you're somebody good with, you know, uh, uh, making food at home, start creating a YouTube channel. You know, your audience is going to find you and you can learn with time, you know, how to make your quality better. Uh, when I started, I had an iPhone 11 and the video quality, you know, if you look at it, you don't feel like watching it. You might report my video if you watch that video now, right? So you learn along the way, you know. This is what I tell many people that who wants to start their career in social media as an influencer. As long as you have a skill set and you can educate people, that is one way of halal earning of income. You know, you're not yeah. dancing. You're not doing anything, uh, you know, irresponsible. That is not going to help people out. As yeah. long as you're providing value and education, your audience will always find you. That is amazing. And, uh, you know, something that I wanted to, uh, you know, get uh, from this as well. You mentioned that, uh, you know, if you're somebody that can provide value and we both have one thing in common, we both really did not like our first videos. How do you control that inner voice? You know, uh, that continues to tell us that that video needs to go out. You need to delete this. Uh, who's going to listen to you? We're talking about imposter syndrome. How do you control that? How did you control that? uh simple i made my uh, next video better than the previous one that's it as yeah. you know as we started our live i told you about the two lines that you draw so mm -hmm. i always compared myself uh, you know why people are not able to achieve success on social media is they start comparing themselves with other people that is a killer you know that is something that is going to demotivate you like if you're creating content in finance or stocks or crypto and people are not watching you but the same kind of content is created by somebody else with the same theme and he's getting millions of views. You might get demotivated. You're like, maybe my content is not good. Come on. It's not your fault. It's how the algorithms work. Some algorithms push your content based on the first five seconds. Some algorithm push your video based on the last 20 seconds. So it's not up to you. Your job is to be consistent. Keep creating content. Make sure you're getting better with time. Try everything possible. Like if I only stuck to only Excel videos, I would have not been able to, you know, create more videos in finance, stocks or crypto. That means I would not be able to grow my wealth because no other company is going to reach out to me and promote their products if I was only talking about Excel. So I started talking about all those other areas where all these financial companies reach out to me, fintech companies, startup companies, crypto based companies. And, and mashallah, it's a great way to, you know, earn income on top of uh, your, your full time income. That's very good. That's a very solid point. And that also will be a great segue to bring us back to the inspired, uh, you know, analyst part, because you told us that you started with the Excel part and then you started diversifying your video content. 
how did that happen what inspired that part of diversification so there were like two guys as you say then you know you always need to have a mentor i all i also had two mentors that i would like to mention one of them was austin hankwitz if you know if you follow him the other one is tick stocks which is uh, robert ross so mm-hmm. when i used to watch their videos they made their financial videos so much interesting like they would just pick up their cameras talk about financial reporting of the companies and see why the stock is moving up and down what are the factors behind it what is the prediction for the future is this stock a buy or a sell so when i watched that video i'm like i have that knowledge why am i not sharing that knowledge with other people so those were my mentors you know i i i watched them closely i learned from them and i tried to create videos better than what they were producing it's not that i was trying to bring them down it's just that i wanted to do it in a better way you know yeah. like yeah. i would start my video uh, this is how coca cola is going to pay you now this is a very strong hook now everybody would be interested how can coca cola pay me you know i'm yeah. the one who's buying coca cola bottles but how yeah. can coca cola pay me then yeah. you say okay when you buy one stock of coca cola this is how much you're going to get in your dividends after 3 mm-hmm. months and that's how you're going to grow your wealth so that way i was able to be entertaining i had a strong hook and i caught the attention of the audience and that's how my video went to a next level and it became a hit yeah and uh, you know uh, i i really uh, you know love the part where you said i tried making content better than that because a lot of people also get into a i would say a different type of imposter syndrome where they try and again compare themselves like hey these five people are already doing content on blockchain technology why would i do that you guys don't realize that just in the last year 1 trillion more people came to the online the website uh, segment the uh, youtube segment and started watching uh, you know more videos 1 trillion more okay, people it's a there big number still, big. there's still a lack of a lot of content creators there there's lack of content on platforms and there are people searching for more content that they're not finding tiktok uh, just in the last month over to google in their search volumes imagine that yeah, we imagine never that. thought it would happen so like, we're talking about so much more opportunity out there it's a very important point that you mentioned sadi bhai that you know companies are struggling to find the right talent let me tell you before when any company wants to advertise their products it was easy you know just create just hire any good graphic designer uh, create a good content and post it as an ad on facebook and instagram you know without having to create a video but now people are not looking at those ads and your return on investment on those ads is not converting into customers yeah. so now people need to create content on tiktok and those media platform because everybody loves to watch videos yeah. so these companies are struggling now because they cannot have uh, those people that can create content for them so that's why they reach out to you as a social media influencer so any company would reach out to me like i would mention the name of one of the companies they reach out to me and they ask me if i can promote their product and the product was very simple your outlook signature wow. so they were trying to make it better and they knew that my audience is uh, an audience that that's uh, that's 9 to 5 workers uh, stocks crypto and everybody and everybody uses email and they also realize that you know i'm sending my newsletter as well so i was the right person for them to promote their product so this is what i'm saying you know explore all the options out there on social media create content on everything that you already know about and mm-hmm. companies will reach out to you you know yeah. you just have to keep on creating content that's it yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's actually good uh, one more thing that i wanted to discuss and i wanted uh, uh, you to discuss it because i realize that a lot of people uh, you know are on the cusp of two different uh, you know tangents one is the cusp where people will go out and take everything is a scam crypto is a scam uh influencers are a scam and then blockchain is a scam nft is a scam and 10 years down the line they'll have miss out on all the opportunities you know uh, these are like a massive amount of people <laughs> then there's a second kind who would continuously jump from one idea to another and then another then another and they're not even living a certain timeline fully to take care of the full opportunity can you cover what are the basic problems with these two tangents and how the youngsters and the people that are coming into these new technologies can improve these two ideas um it's a great question sadi bhai because i have been you know meeting lot of my followers who were going through the same problem um this is not the first time so 
I started my journey in crypto back in 2017 when Bitcoin reached all time high of almost eighteen thousand dollars. I mean, so yeah. I had so many friends at that time who were calling crypto a scam, you know, and they were like, "Crypto is gonna have its own death and it's gonna fall back, and I'm not going to invest." And when crypto fell back, and they were like, "Adnan, I was telling you, you know, that things are gonna yeah. fall back." I'm like. Yeah. Bro, this is the time when there's blood in the market. That's the time to dollar cost average and buy everything that is on sale. So what I did was in 2018, when crypto market crashed, I started buying Ethereum, a lot of Ethereums. And now, even if you bought one Ethereum at that time for $200, today yeah. Ethereum is, is at $3,100. And it reached all-time high of $4,500. So yeah. coming back to your question, you know, there are like two types of people. First type of people who will always call everything a scam. Same friends who were calling crypto a scam, they are like, Adnan, tell us, you know, how did you get into crypto? Do you have any course that we can join? So, you know, experience taught them, you know, that not to declare everything as scam. Now, yeah. all the people who were calling the scam, they're back in crypto and they're investing and they're making good money. Yeah. Second point about, you know, people from jumping from one space to another, because they are not reading, they are not doing research. They just want to, you know, capture the thoughts on social media when somebody's talking about, you know, uh, uh, that uh, stock is going to the moon or Shiba Inu is going to the moon. They will jump into those. They don't want to do their research. So as long as you're doing your research, you are getting all the knowledge that is needed. You will be in the safe place. If you are not researching, look what happened in Pakistan like a week ago, more than 100 million of dollars were lost by the people who wanted to get rich quick with all these Telegram apps. Do you know about that or, or no? I, I actually uh, think I just read a thread and that was also from your stories on, uh, you know, I think uh, these were your tweets on Twitter where I yeah. actually, uh, uh, I would you like to tell uh, us a bit more about this scam? Like how did they lose like a hundred million? What happened? So, so coming back to your question, you know, people like to jump from one uh, place to another. Those yeah. were the same people that they get scammed from these scammers. So what they, these scammers do is they are very intelligent, you know, they create kind of a trust with their audience. So what they do is they tell them, OK, bring in your money, create a wallet on Binance. Yeah. And and they have their own uh, applications or, or apps. So they have an API connected with Binance. So okay. once you have your account is created, they will tell you, OK, transfer one Ethereum or two Ethereum or five Ethereum and bring it to their platform. Now uh -huh. your money is brought into their platform. Now on Telegram, they will tell you to buy this crypto and sell it at that price. You would have made 10 percent, 15 percent. Now yeah. you're becoming greedy because now you know that they made your money for you and you're like, you're like, wow, I'm at a very good place. I'm making money. All the other people in the world are stupid. I'm the most intelligent person. Yeah. yeah so your yeah. trust is developed. But now they will try to market that 10 to 15 percent to a lot of people when they have 3000 or 4000 people join in. Imagine mm -hmm. multiply two Ethereum with 3000, which is about 6000 Ethereum. Mm -hmm. So in one app, you have 6000 Ethereum. Now they will just close the app, take away, take away your money. And you're like, where should I go to launch my complaint? These people are disappeared with my funds. That is what happened with the Binance scam. Oh my God. Yeah. It's like, I, I heard this and um, you know, my first advice with everyone has been like, look, first do, don't even go into crypto unless you understand what these terminologies are. And this is my, uh, I moved from retail. Uh, first I was in public speaking, which was soft skills and training industry. When I moved to Australia, I was uh, working in fast food retail. I was working with Domino's and uh, working in across a couple of uh, different stores okay. for them. And I started pretty bottom everywhere I've gone. And I, I have actually discussed this with a couple of people, which is frustrating, but we have to understand that once we move from one country to another, the landscape is different. And most of the time it's frustrating, but you have to start from zero. Yeah. So when I started, uh, you know, and moved to uh, this industry, the first thing I do is I understand the terminologies of the industry before I jump in. Yeah. I am uh, not even going to lie. Uh, things, uh, the only money I've invested in crypto was last year. That was my first year in crypto. And the only money I invested in crypto was the money I could have lost. And the only thing I would have lost is I was about to buy the newest and the greatest iPhone ever made. And I was like, I'm going to invest this uh, 1600 uh, euros into crypto. And what I did was when I was, uh, you know, investing that money, it wasn't like, oh, everybody's talking about this. Let's do that. Everybody I was learning what the you know cost of moving 
blockchain to another blockchain is what is ERC20, what is BEP20, what is TRC20, what is Solana, you know, uh, people don't even know what Solana is, but they're like, I'm going to buy Solana. So, <laughs> you know, it's going to make me rich. So what layer ones are, what uh, DeFi systems are, what are DAOs? So understanding those points and then always staying back. And my wife knows this because when a lot of my friends and in my family circle, a lot of people were like, oh, let's buy Dogecoin. <laughs> like, I was like, I can't live 24-7 with the desperation that Elon Musk is going to tweet about something. So I make money. And if he doesn't make a tweet about something, I lose money. This lose is money. not, I, it doesn't make sense to me. I was like, this, this is, is gambling. Not, this is not investing. Yeah. And this, this is exactly what I was like. And they were like, now the next one is Shiba Inu. Let's buy. And I was like, dude, I'm not. Plus when the market markets go down, I do the same thing. I'm like, uh, what am I going to lose an iPhone? So I buy everything when the market's down and I go back to playing my PlayStation 4, a couple of games, a couple of months later, when I look into my account and I'm like, oh, my money has doubled. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Profit from them and then move on to the next one. But it's it's also like the second part where I have seen is greed also kills people. And that's the, that's the biggest part because people don't understand. The richest people that we know of, Jeff Bezos never created an online course, I'm going to make you rich. Uh, Warren Buffett never created a course that I'm going to teach you how to be rich. Elon Musk never, because the rich are too busy making money. Exactly. We need to understand this. Exactly. The rich people don't uh, come live on Facebook every day like, hey guys, I'm going to teach you how yeah. to do futures trading. I'm going to do this with you and you're going to make a, a, this and I'm going to make you a millionaire. No, simple as that. Guys, if anybody guarantees you that I'm going to make you a millionaire, that statement itself should be a red flag to you. Like exactly. That. No, nobody's going to be there and make you a millionaire. I have met a lot of millionaires in my life. Yeah. Not one single millionaire tells me, you know, I am going to make you a millionaire. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, there are, uh, I'm also going to not name a YouTuber, but I'm going to say that some people start their videos saying, hello, millionaires. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's, it's better not to highlight anybody, you know, but people can understand, you know, who we're talking yeah, about. Like, look, it's like I, I've, I've actually left a couple of very detailed comments because I'm like, guys, if you guys don't understand this value right now, you can come back to this video a decade later and you'll understand what I was talking about. But all your choices, it is completely all about your choices. Exactly. So, um, uh, one more thing that I wanted to, uh, you know, loop into because I uh, don't want uh, this entire because a lot of people who know you and follow you and everyone in my network that knew you knows you for the blockchain technology and all the work. I wanted to also explore like your moving to US. When did that happen? How did you, uh, you know, deal with the cultural shock that happens mostly when you come into a new country and setting up uh, the home and school for the kids and then finding the job. Can you talk a bit about that? How did you overcome that chapter of your life? Because that is something which a lot of people don't know about. And I personally think that this is what people should know because people look at the success story, what Inspired Analyst is right now and think that, hey guys, he did it in one and a half year. I can do it. They don't know the 10 years before that, that were in the making of you <laughs> being able to pull that out and, uh, you know, pull that off in one and a half year. So I will just tell you my story in a sum, uh, in a summarized way so that people can understand where I started and how I reach here, where I am. So Thanks. I'm a normal person from a middle class family. Um, I used to watch English movies back in the old days, you know, when Terminator used to come back to the future used to come. I, I never understood what they're talking about, but I just enjoyed watching it, you know. So my learning started from a very uh, young age. Uh, so my father was in Ministry of Foreign Affairs. You know, they take their family members to different countries. So I got a chance to, you know, visit India in my childhood as well as Sri Lanka as well. In Sri Lanka, I learned, you know, O-levels, learned English, came back to Pakistan, finished my MBA. And after when I finished my MBA, I realized that back in 2008, things were not fine in Pakistan economically. And I'm like, let me just try to find any job. I work for Mobilink, which is one of the biggest telecom sector there. But while working at Mobilink, I was not able to change my job from a call center to a finance department because there was so much of competition. And if you don't know any Vasta, you are, uh, you know, standing in the middle of nowhere. 
that is where I went to Saudi Arabia to explore my options. Now, if you ask me about the cultural shock, I had a bigger cultural shock when I went to Saudi Arabia than when I came to United States. Reason being is Saudi Arabia is a total different dynamic. It's a big, it's such a big monster because you are in, in that country. You don't know how to speak Arabic and those people don't understand English. So where do you stand? You know, you stand in the middle of nowhere. As long as you, you know, I'm not going to talk anything negative about Saudi Arabia. It's a brilliant country. It's a great country. And, you know, you can earn money tax free. This is one of the biggest advantage. Mm -hmm. And uh, I married there, but I realized my kid needs better education when he grows up. I was looking at all the other families. If their kids grew up, they would leave their families and the kids would go to America or Canada or anywhere else. I'm like, no, I don't want to be the guy where me and my wife are sitting here and my son is going to America for education. I'm like, I'm young. Why not make the decision now? My wife is already a citizen of U.S. And I'm the one, you know, I have the U.S. visa in the plate for me. All I need is put my hand in the plate and take the visa. And I was the one who was delaying it. So my wife said, okay, no, now is the right time to, you know, move to U.S. Because there was this concept of Saudization. South, Saudization is when they prefer local talent over expatriates. So mm -hmm. that started five years ago and still happening. It's a very difficult uh, situation in Saudi Arabia to work as a yep. foreigner these days. So I came to US and it wasn't a cultural shock for me because everything that was so much difficult in Saudi Arabia, yeah. it was so easy in US. Like yeah. uh, in Saudi Arabia, if I want to change my SIM card, I have to go to their office and get everything done, speaking in English, sometimes they won't understand. In America, just pick up the phone and call them and the SIM card is going to get delivered to your house. Like the simplicity of things, is so much here in US that you're you don't have to fight for the basic necessities of life. So the only thing that you know I did not have in in US was education. I had my MBA from Pakistan, but I did not have any education from US. And I always dreamt of you know getting some education when I will be in US one day. So without wasting any time, in the first six months, I enrolled myself for masters in data science. And within two and a half years, I finished that 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 degree and without taking anything as a loan on my head, I was doing three to four multiple different jobs. One job was as a full-time employee at at and store selling cell phones. Second job was, you know, driving Uber on the weekends. Third job was as a social media analyst working for a startup company. And the fourth job was delivering food. So all those things together, along with my studies, that was the toughest time period. But Alhamdulillah, you know, when you put so much of hard work into something, Allah makes ways for you. And here I am today. Oh, uh, that is great. This is such an inspirational story. I'm going to make a small video clip of this and I'm going to spread that and <laughs> spread that everywhere. I want you to post this everywhere as well, because look, this a lot of people don't realize. I'm really glad that you mentioned the three jobs and also you elaborated on the three jobs. People don't realize how tough it is. I've, I've, uh, my journey in Australia, my journey in Ireland has been the same. You know, you start off from very scratch and just making your, uh, you know, ends meet is, uh, you know, and then uh, doing three jobs and thinking about, you know, career progression, career progression. is such a difficult, yeah. difficult thing to do. But if you've done it without any loan, amazing work, because I, I know how your body completely, you know, starts to, you know, just fall apart because my my friends who were bodybuilders were always kind of you know surprised when they came to my house and there was always whey protein uh sitting I was like you don't gym right i was like no <laughs> that that is when my second job ends and i have to go for my third job i usually take a pre-workout or something that actually allows me to go that extra two hours then i come back home and oh, this will allow great. my muscle to repair Okay. Then I'm going to sleep. And <laughs> they were like, I was like, look, I'm looking at the ingredients. These are the things that you would do to shape up your muscle. Your muscles. Look at your six packs. I'm looking at this because I am tiring and, uh, you know, expanding all my muscles. And now I know that if I go without any protein supplement, I'm going to get sick. And my circumstances don't allow me to get sick. I have a wife. I have a, you know. Yeah. I that's have not an option. Teacher. And that's that's actually where yeah. I've seen that when you don't have an option, that is when the really, uh, you know, the gold happens, uh, you know, to your life. And I, I think these these have been really, really uh, tough times. But 
what was the best thing that came out of that period if you have to give me one thing that came out of that period um i would just summarize it and say you know you explore the hidden component of your brain and that lets you you know explore new opportunities so you are not confined to one single thing you can do multitasking you can do multi work and that prepared me for the kind of person i am today Oh my god this this is exactly no look this this is perfect uh, a mentor of me uh, nadeem chohan his name is he's no more uh, um, uh, may uh, you know i i used to follow him a lot on facebook and i remember the one of his facebook uh, post that he made before he passed away like 3 or 4 days ago i was even discussing it with my wife the other day that you know he met two strong uh, two strange people when he entered the lift do you remember that that facebook post I I don't uh, I personally met him before I uh, you know I met him at his office with uh, Farhat Karamali at the office because we started a consultancy we were youngsters and you know oh, wow. we started making good money and then he on a piece of paper made a rock for me rock okay is that uh, is like sadi I see you as this rock but you know what this is this is a 2 rupee stone right now okay. but inside this rock because this rock you is not even taking time to furnish itself polish itself and realize that it's a diamond inside you will wow. continuously sell your entire life yourself as a 2 rupee stone wow if i was you i would spend the next 5 years lock myself in a room go into the biggest companies learn spend time with mentors learn and then come back and sell one piece of this look of this rock for whatever it's worth Word. and then you will see the real return i left yeah. for australia it was my first month there and parat karamali posted about uh, you know what had happened and we were all at shock because that guy uh, while working as a soft skills trainer i was one of the junior 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 uh, you know i would say in that fraternity of trainers but he was an inspiration i he i was an inspiration uh, i used to watch all his videos and i mean the kind of uh, presence he used to have on a stage and anything that he uttered from his mouth it had an effect on everybody's life yes. and he was the best motivator like there are so many motivator uh, out there these days but they don't have that effect on people you know you just look at them and they're like oh they're just their mouth is bigger than what they're talking about you know but nadeem chohan i would highly appreciate him may his so rest in peace i mean but he was yeah. one of the best motivator i have ever seen yeah uh, for me as well i i personally think that uh, we lost a massive piece massive. of uh, you know the pakistan's training fraternity yeah. and i i would really want you to share that story when he met two strangers in the elevator can you share that uh, for I our would, audiences I, i would i would definitely share that story yeah yeah so that is amazing uh, uh great a uh, great and let's move on to one another important area that i want to discuss with you now that was uh, failures so uh, uh, again throughout this journey we've talked about what worked for you how many failures did it take for you to finally find your true calling um i would say i would not call them failures i would call them experiences So if you want to call my mobiling experience in Pakistan working for 3 years in a call center uh trying you know an MBA in finance working for a call center for 3 years now you could take it as a failure or you could take it as an experience to grow to the next level now coming to Saudi Arabia not finding the job in the finance but working as an analyst in the marketing I wouldn't call it a failure I would call it an experience so those 8 years of experience brought me to united states and in us um i would remember that you know i was actually fired from two jobs and those were not based on my performance those were based on my personal circumstances and that was a hit back to me but those uh, those experiences have brought me to a level where you know i am able to uh, grow my wealth with multiple streams of income i realized it that at this day and age you cannot just depend on one stream of income if you are depending on one stream of income you are one step away from failure one step away from your your uh, uh, you know uh, financial uh, i would say for getting into uh, the sad part of being poor so anybody who wants to you know take the best part of this life it is to you know create multiple streams of income 
I was late enough to start that concept when I was 34 or 35 years of age. It took me so much time to, you know, understand that multiple streams of income is the way to create your financial wealth, which is financial freedom for you, for your family and for them in the future. So I would say my biggest failure in life would be to realize that my financial freedom came into being with multiple streams of income at a very later stage in life. I wish I had that mindset when I was in my teenage or when I was, when I crossed my my 25 years of age, you know, that that, that is what I, I would like to declare myself as. Tell me about your failure, Sadi Bhai. What are your failures in life? My, I would, I would really say that I, again, uh, would not uh, title them as failures. I would call them experiments. I think uh, I've always been uh, proud of uh, calling myself, I'm the stupid one who will take the biggest risk in the room. And, uh, you know, uh, all those risks have uh, massively paid out because usually there will be, uh, you know, a project that everybody else in the room is kind of scared of taking. And I'll tell my boss that I'll take it. And he was like, are you ready? I'm like, I know by the time it is about to finish, I will be ready <laughs> because I know that failure is not an option for me yeah. on uh, this regard. Uh, I'll tell you where this, uh, you know, um, uh, calling came from for me. I, I've been uh, moving abroad. Um, my parents have always trained me that, look, uh, it's better to um, fight things out and, uh, you know, face your fears rather than asking for help. And this is not, I'm not saying that asking for help is a bad thing, but I'm saying that I'm someone who would rather sleep uh, the day, uh, you know, or uh, eat one day meal, like one meal a day, rather than asking somebody for help in uh, regards to financial thing. Uh, there was one day that I was at the hospital. Uh, this was at the time uh, where, uh, you know, life wasn't working out for me. Um, I wanted to be my own boss, started my own uh, business venture. Nothing worked out, uh, kind of bankrupt. Uh, I had $32 in my pocket. 32, uh, and I was at a hospital and uh, I went to the nurse and I said that there's something wrong with my face. I want to see the doctor. And she told me like, if you want to see the doctor here, you would need almost $400 or something. But there's a public hospital next door, which will treat you for free. Uh, and you just might have to wait a bit. And she did not tell me that waiting a bit actually meant waiting there 11 hours of your entire day. Wow. When you're sick, when, uh, you know, things aren't working out, it was raining. My wife, uh, you know, finished her work, came directly to the thing. And I did not know what's happening with my face. It was stress and stress so much that, you know, there was something called facial palsy where I lost uh, my entire face and oh, uh, it got God. paralyzed. Oh, and, uh, you know, uh, it was also something that I didn't notice. My wife noticed uh, a night before. And then that entire day 10 hours sitting there with the 32 euro in my pocket and i'm like uh i know this is happening right now but it would never happen to me and my family again and i was like uh, i i will change my and that is the day where i decided that i'm not gonna be as lazy as i have been i'm not gonna not take risks in my life i'm not gonna not take opportunities in my life and i'm not gonna uh you know be at a very old age and say like i never tried I would rather say that kids, uh, you know, in my family that, look, I tried everything and this is what worked this out. This is what it is. Yeah. This, this is what worked, worked out. out. And yeah. At the end of the day, it, it is that story which actually completely changed my life. Now my friends and my family, when they see me, they're like, he wakes up at seven. He finishes all this stuff. <laughs> he gets so much stuff done. So, you know, it's a very complete paradigm shift. But my biggest uh, life learning has been that it, a lot of people think that natural talent does it. A lot of people think that your skill set and your uh, educational background does it. I think I've seen the most abnormal skill sets succeed in life because they've had a solid discipline in their life. If your discipline's there, you know that you're now up, uh, you know, at uh, you know uh, seven a.m. and now this means business. I have 10 more things to achieve in life and I will get this done. This is what we need to, you know, put in ourselves because I think discipline is one component. A lot of people don't look at when they want to be like someone. Uh, yeah. You might have out of your million following a uh, hundred thousand people or more than a hundred thousand people that want to be inspired and listen, but they won't want to do anything that you're doing while the weekend is here. 
<laughs> they would want to like, and this is my biggest, uh, uh, you know, grip with a lot of people that become my client as well. And they're like, hey, uh, I want to achieve this. I want to achieve a, uh, you know, promotion. I want to do all these different things. But I don't want to do the actions that will take me there. I'm like, guys, I can't do the push-ups for you. Simple yeah, exactly. That. You have to put in the effort and, and the, all the hard work together. Um, uh, Sadibai, since I'm also going to post this video on my mm -hmm. social media platform as well, in the beginning, I forgot to ask you about your introduction so that my audience can also get to know about you. <laughs> so could you please give, give, give my audience your introduction? Okay, so my name is Sadi Maktoum. I'm a, I'm a normal person who is living a nine to five life. I'm someone who is very mindful of what I will want to achieve in life. I'm very mindful of what I signed up for in life because for me, living a balanced life is more important than living a successful life. For me, the methodology towards success is having a very fruitful and a happy journey where I am not finding myself lonely when I reach a certain point. I'm somebody that has exposed myself to public speaking. I am somebody that takes pride that I help young talent coming into the market. If you're jobless, you can reach out to me. I'll help you find the best job That's in great. your region. I'll help you find your career pathways. And then I'm someone who is a normal person that gives everything in life to become better at my family life, in my professional life, and also my, uh, you know, um, I would say my dream life, which is like helping others achieve goals. Every year I set a target. Uh, this year, my target is to help a thousand people get either a job or get promoted at their job. This That's is a right. target that I set. So if you're someone that seems that career progression, job coaching, uh, 95 Live and Side Hustle is something that is down your road, you can uh, get connected with me. And uh, this is going to be my introduction, simple, uh, you know, a delightful introduction. That's great, Sadi Bhai. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And out of all the people watching it out there, uh, you'd need to realize that, you know, there are real people out there who can help you to progress in your nine to five job. Sadi Bhai is an amazing person. I have seen him very much active on all over his social media. He is genuine and he can definitely help you reach to that level which you're expecting to reach in your career progression if you need any help with your job or you know optimizing your profile for applying for the jobs or you're struggling to find your next interview sadi bhai is the best option for you to reach out thank you very much for that anand bhai and uh, you know uh, we've definitely hit up uh, the hour mark now is where we try and move towards the closure of this conversation i want to open the conversation a bit towards you have a massive audience now and a lot of your audience uh, I know has this question. They want to also start creating content. They want to start creating content on a genre that is up and booming these days, blockchain, cryptocurrencies. If somebody wants to create content for your genre, what do you want them to start with? Like what should they learn? What should they you know, start getting an understanding in-depth knowledge of? before they jump into creating this content? Because I know that you also are creating content in a niche market, which is very financial, uh, you know, uh, I would say there's observations by YouTube and all these different platforms that will look at what you're writing and saying. And if there's something wrong, they can take down. I, I've personally seen a lot of, uh, you know, uh, 100,000 or, you know, 1 million follower accounts taken down because it wasn't suitable financial advice. So, you know, can you cover that topic for our audience now? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> I will not cover it in much detail because the audience will not be able to pick the right points. I will yeah. only talk about the right points so that they know what to pick. So mm -hmm. I would say in any of your journey to understanding any new technology, which is blockchain and cryptocurrency, while you're learning that technology yourself, start creating snippets or content based on it. For example, today I learned about what blockchain is, what Bitcoin is. I read about it. Now your creative side should talk about how I can make that into a content of 30 seconds, how I can compromise my knowledge that I've gained reading about it for 15, 20 minutes and convert it into 15 or 30 seconds. So once you learn that aspect of it, you are a content creator because then you can read any article, you can watch the news and you will create content. Like the other way, I was at the gym. If you followed my story on Instagram, yes. Yes. okay, I was running and I had CNBC in front of me and Jim Kramer was talking about the top dividend stocks for the next decade. And I'm like, I took a screenshot of that and I told everybody, I'm going to create a TikTok video based on this information. Yeah, so what yeah. I did was I came home, 
I went to seekingalpha.com. That is my to go place to, you know, read about the companies and their dividend movement for the past many years. I took a screenshot of those dividends for those stocks and I created my TikTok video with the green screen behind. In that green screen, I posted about the dividends of these companies. And within like, I would say 15 minutes, I was able to create a content that I posted on TikTok, on Instagram, on Pinterest, on YouTube. So content is out there, you know, information is out there. You need to compromise that information and post it to the audience and audience is going to find you. One thing that I would tell you is do not talk about it in a language that your audience is not going to connect with. Like I am in US. I know a lot of people in US. That's why I started it in English. But if you're not good with English, start in your local language, start in Urdu, start in Sinhalese, start in Arabic, just start creating content because that is the future. And you have to connect with a lot of people because there's so many monetary benefits to it. And there's so much educational benefits to you and your audience, because whatever you're going to create, you're going to remember it because whatever I've created in the past, I remember it. So if, if anybody interviews me to, you know, check my knowledge, I have no problem sharing that knowledge because I created content and that information is retained. Yeah. So that's the advice that's I want to give it to you. Thank you very much for that answer. Because the thing is, a lot of people uh, want to create content. A lot of people don't have this. And the point of being yourself, being genuine is very important, guys. I can tell you one thing. One thing that the viewership has learned over the last one decade is when you're on YouTube and you're not being your own self, it's going to come out in a matter of days. If you're being, hey guys, today I'm going to talk about this. You can keep that up for 30 days, maximum 60 days, maximum 90 days. But unless you're putting something in your you know, self, your body to get that kind of energy, you will not be able to keep that uh, you know, uh, kind of hyper energetic self. <laughs> yeah. so look, some people are naturally like that mm. and some people are not. No. You need to understand who you are and audiences would love to listen to yourself being your own genuine self rather than you trying to copy someone. At the beginning, you'll do that. But copying someone would never get you to any point in life. The world only had one Steve Jobs. There's no second Steve Jobs. The world will never have the second Einstein. The world will never have the second Muhammad Ali. The world will want to see the very first you. You know, you can only have one, uh, you know, Adnan Hashmi. You can have one Sadi Magdoum. But that is something that also, uh, you know, uh, the, the the person we spoke about, Nadim Chohan, used to come into the biggest leadership conference and say, hey, who do you want to be uh, in the next 10 years? And when people used to say Steve Jobs or something, he would actually correct them saying, like, why do you not want to be your own self? Yourself. Right? Because he, he was always looking for somebody to stand up and say, I want to be the best self of my own personality. That's it. That's what we wanted. That's it. Yeah. Um, to just close this conversation, Adnan Bhai, uh, thank you very much for everything that you have shared with us. This was very insightful. I love, uh, you know, how we've broken down the, you know, entire uh, discussion on the degrees, the, you know, uh, the experience that we want, the skill set, why side income is important. How do you start, uh, you know, understanding that failure is not something that is bad. It has allowed you to evolve. I wanted you to also tell me, where do you see the you know, market in the next five years when I'm looking at people who are not creating content today, what will be their biggest regret in five years? The same regret that they have when they did not invest in Apple stock back in 2001. So I would say if you are not diversifying your income, you're not diversifying multiple streams of income, that is the regret you're going to have down the line in five years when you'll see other people in your circle going to the next level in their financial freedom. You will be like, oh, I'm still working for money while for this person, money is working for him. That will be the breaking point. That's when you're going to realize, I wish I would have done something today to, to secure my future after five years. That's uh, very good. That's, uh, that's actually, I think, the perfect answer and the perfect note to end this over here. Uh, guys, Adnan Hashmi, also uh, known as the Inspired Analyst. I highly, highly recommend. Uh, I have just seen that, uh, you know, Adnan Bhai's course on Udemy, uh, the course on uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain technology is already on sale. If you guys want to uh, sign up, I've taken that course. 
Uh, if you follow him regularly, you will find that he always gives you free access to his courses every once in a while. He'll give you uh, those sign-up links where you can have massive discounts during uh, Christmas and other periods. But uh, if you are someone that wants to, uh, you know, uh, uh, success-proof yourself or, you know, future-proof yourself, I would want you to take things slowly. Uh, I would want you to always look around for people on social media that say, I'm going to make you an, uh, uh, you know, millionaire. I'm going to make you something. Nobody can make you anything. Everybody can just guide you with a certain action plan. If you are not willing to take action and you're not willing to move yourself, nobody's going to be able to, uh, you know, turn your life upside down. Exactly. At the end of the day, it's exactly just you. It has been a wonderful conversation, uh, Anand Bhai. Uh, anything that you want to uh, let our audiences know, uh, you know, about uh, today or anything in the future that they will look forward to or get connected with you? Um, yes, for sure. First of all, you know, I would like to say thank you to a genuine person like Sadi Bhai. He started following me on my Instagram and then I followed him back and he started giving me shout outs on all his social media uh, platform, uh, whether it is Instagram, Facebook or Twitter. He was giving me the shout outs that I think only a genuine person can give it to it. I never asked for it. So I would really want to say thank you so much, Sadi Bhai, for doing all that for me because it means a lot. And I would also urge my audience to follow Sadi Bhai back because in this day and age, it's very difficult to find the right set of people who can give you the right information that you need. Uh, so anybody who wants to you know, proceed in their career pro pro progression or finding nine to five or side hustles, uh, Sadi Bhai is one of the genuine person that you can reach out to. And it has been my, you know, best pleasure to be with you on this live. And, you know, we'll hope to have one soon in the future as well. Thank you very much. And look, uh, I am planning to come uh, in the next year to, uh, you know, US. I would love to, uh, you know, find an opportunity to come meet you myself. And it will be my absolute pleasure to come meet you, not as, uh, you know, podcast hearing, but just to, uh, you know, get to know you as a person. Uh, look, uh, there's something that I want to leave with all the people that are listening to uh, this conversation, something that I genuinely do. I know there's a, there's, a, there's a sickness with all of us on social media. When we look at somebody's million followers, we start as a human getting jealous and not share, uh, you know, their post or like their post or something. I have learned the uh, principle of reciprocity from a book called Influence by Robert Cialdini. The good in the world won't come back to you if you're not giving good to others. A lot of people continuously complain, my family doesn't support me, my, uh, you know, uh, my friends don't support me, my social media, uh, you know, uh, 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 society doesn't support me. But at the end of the day, if you go to your profile, they're not supporting anyone. They're not complimenting anyone. They're not, and this is what I do. Like when I see, uh, you know, people like uh, Inspired Analysts growing, uh, when I see like uh, people like Junior Akram achieving what they have achieved, I'm genuinely happy. There are young content creators that I give shout out and everything. And I'm happy because we need the right people creating content, guys. We want to be that motivation, which a lot of good people don't get. And they leave these platforms because these are people that genuinely want to help you. But when we don't give them enough appreciation, and there's very, very few people in this world that actually want to give appreciation to others, but they all want to take it. So if you're someone like that, start this. You will realize that one year of you helping others, the next year, so many people are going to come back and say like, look, you helped me when I had no one else supporting me and I have still kept it in my heart because when you're, you're at a point in life where you're hitting rock bottom, you will always remember the few people that came up, picked you up, that actually dusted uh, your entire shirt and told you like, you can still do it, go on and uh, go uh, conquer life. It has been my absolute pleasure to host you, Adnan Bhai. Uh, and uh, in future, I would love to, uh, you know, get you on uh, this podcast again. And if there's anything that I can, uh, you know, uh, uh, support you with, just reach out, always give me a shout out. You'll continuously be in, uh, you know, our prayers. And also I'll stay uh, connected. So, okay. love is everyone. Thank you so and, much, love uh, is everybody. And uh, let's end this on a high note. Thank you yeah. and see you all again. Playing it cool, breaking the rules. I don't need you, I got my own back. Oh, 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 oh.